I'm Electric with Dominic. I'm Dominic, and today I am sitting in a very special vehicle. Uh, I'm visiting a friend of mine, um, a little ways away from my home in Florida, and he's got this really awesome electric vehicle that I used to write about back in the day. So I started writing about electric vehicles in I think maybe like 2008, I think. And this came out in 2012, and leading up to it, there was a whole drama you know company you know was going to bring this in and then there were some issues and this, this so this sort of new company i don't know it was just a ton of stuff going on but it's a interesting car in 2012 when it came out it sold for thirty nine thousand seven hundred and thirty nine dollars that's uh that's a significant amount of money actually forty thousand dollar for electric car uh Let's see what else so we got for information here. It's got, you know, LED daytime running lights, LED brake lights, LED uh, running lights, rear running lights, 17 inch alloy wheels. So, you know, lots of stuff going on. Full leather seating, uh, premium Alpine stereo system, and floor mats. It's got a 31 kilowatt hour battery. It's a LFP, or what we call it back then, we would say uh, Lifepo. So it's a LIFEPO4. Uh, it's got a 6.6 .6 kilowatt AC charger on board, which is good. BMS, of course. See, actually, it's interesting to actually mention it has a battery management system because it was kind of a new thing or a new concept to people. They didn't realize, you know, you need a whole uh, system to keep, you know, voltages and, and everything in check in batteries, to keep everything, you know, kosher. Uh, yeah, airbags, that's good. 100 kilowatt motor, so 134 horsepower. And we'll take it for a ride here. So, four, four wheel independent suspension, that's good. So, you probably already know what this is already, and I will let the cat out of the bag if you don't. So, this is the 2012 Coda. Let's take a look from the outside. Maybe it'll, it'll ring a bell. Look at this beauty. I mean, look at it. Ah, did I mention 17 inch wheels? All right, so there's a great story behind this. I'm not sure if you can really hear me out here. There's a whole lot of construction happening down over there. But uh, yeah, so basically my friend Kyle from Edospec Studios found this at a dealership lot where it was brand new. It was never sold. So it just sat there collecting dust and slowly uh, disintegrating, or <laughs> not disintegrating, well, maybe a little disintegration. Just like get a nice patina happening here. Let's go inside. Let's see. All right. The the door card over here is kind of falling apart, so it is deteriorating somewhat. Uh, he did give me the keys. So yeah, big old chunky keys. And down here is kind of interesting. It says uh, first 500, 33 of 500. But I don't think they ever made that many. Uh, yeah, so let's see what happens. Why don't we put the key in the ignition? All right. I should probably put my seatbelt on. anything going on so I wonder if there's a power on button there must be right uh, okay the brakes got some pressure when I first put my foot down on the brake it kind of almost went to the floor but then put one pump and it was feeling more normal so it should drive all right uh, spin me around here See if I can figure figure out how to get this thing started up and uh, I think I'm gonna take it around for a little bit of a drive here in this lot. So it's been a while since I've been in a car with an actual key. <laughs> and you just twist the key, of course. That's all you gotta do. Um, right, so let's do that and see what happens. Alrighty, turn the key on. Oh, all kinds of lights come up. Look at that. Some beeping. Now it's quiet, so let's see. Got the brake off. Let's see if it'll pull out. 
Uh, no, it's not moving. Oh, well, because I need to put it. <laughs> I've never driven a car before, apparently. So we put it into drive. Oh my God. <laughs> and now we'll go. It's, is it going? It's, it feels like it's just kind of rolling, not really going. I'm afraid of taking it too far. I may have to push it back. Let's see if it goes in reverse. This is, yeah, it breaks off. Oh no. No, this is not working properly. Something's wrong. Um, okay, I guess I better check with the experts and see if there's some other button or thing I need to do to engage power because it's not engaging any power. It's just sort of, you know, uh, coasting down this little hill. <laughs> That's no good. Yeah, just fiddling with it a little bit. Just, I unlocked the door and, uh, you know, turned the key a couple times and it seemed to move. So let's try this again. We'll put it in the drive. Got the emergency brake off. Gonna spin this camera around. We can get some forward motion. Wait, push it on. Oh yeah. Okay, it's working. It's a... Uh, <laughs> kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of amazing actually. It runs. Oh, yeah, it's got uh, not a lot of pep and not a lot of brake. <laughs> and it smells like an old car in here that's been sitting in a field, which it basically has been. But it does actually drive, so that's neat. Oh, there's Colton. Oh, oh a Rivian pickup truck is short up here. Okay. Let's uh, see if I can back this thing back up again. Oh, I got it to stop. That's good. All right, I've got it parked up here now, so. <laughs> Uh, it's back in his place. I guess uh, Kyle's saying that he may uh, drive this as like a, a daily driver just for around town once he gets a few things fixed up and changed on it. Um, they're going to try to do a complete detailing of the exterior and see how much of this paint they can bring back to life. I think it's kind of a lost cause, but you know, why not make it look as good as it possibly can? It'll take a bit of effort, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to drive this around town. I think I'd like... So Kyle has a smart car as well. I think I'd prefer that. This probably has more range with a 31 kilowatt hour battery. I'm sure, I forget what the exact range figures were on it. Uh, 88 miles, is that right? Hmm, when fully charged, the, tra the vehicle can travel 88 miles, which means it wasn't super efficient because like say a, a Chevy Spark with a 20 or with a 19 kilowatt hour battery would do i think 83 miles from the factory so yeah not super efficient but again this is 2012 and it's built uh, on an old mitsubishi chassis in by a chinese company back then and retrofitted uh, with electric components and so we're not talking like state-of-the-art engineering but at the time you know there wasn't anything really available some of the, the Nissan Leaf, I guess, would have been the, yeah, a, would have been the move to go, actually, if it was available. At the same time, it's probably, Nissan Leaf is probably twice the car easily this is, and it probably has held up a lot better, but, uh, you know, it was weird, <laughs> there were weird days back then, you know, people with a, with a dream, and a few connections in the car in, auto industry could, you know, make something like this happen. I've got this beeping at me, I guess, for not having my seatbelt on, uh, which is fine. I think I'll turn the key off, but there's one other little thing I noticed that was almost like a premium touch for back then. Let me open this door and look, turn the, turn the camera around and you can see the Dakota word mark on the, on the sill here lights up. Obviously that's not really a great big deal, but it's kind of kind of cool to see like a nice little touch like that in a in a car like this it's just so basic and it feels basic when you shut the door you can feel like the roof vibrate <laughs> it's uh yeah not exactly premium anyway that's the uh 2012 coda for you hope you enjoyed this video hit like subscribe 
tap that bell icon for notifications and we'll see you in the next one all right ciao